Hello, everyone. Right before the summer solstice, we are going to have a very interesting anoretic moment when a number of celestial objects are at the very end of the signs. And after the summer solstice, there's going to be a Cancer full moon. I will do three separate videos because the subject matter uh, implies it. So let's take a look at the um, anoretic moment first, because as you will see, uh, what I did, uh, this is the uh, the London chart uh, for the 19th of June at 5 p.m. London. And as you will be able to see in a minute, I just don't know how to move this. Hold on one second. I'm always fighting with, there's this, uh, I'm, I'm recording this in Zoom and on the Zoom screen, there is this screen sharing thing and it it usually covers half my my uh, page. So anyhow, this is the uh, the space time moment from London. And what I did was I was waiting for the moon to become anoretic as well at the end at the very end of Scorpio. And in this way, we have a sun moon quincunx and anoretic quincunx. And uh, as I said, uh, the whole whole moment has this being stuck energy. So everything is. Talk. And if you look around in the world, this is exactly how you feel. We are a couple of days after the um, EU elections. And uh, well, very interesting that the people weren't completely cretins and they realized that no, they don't want a universal war in, uh, in Europe. And those who were the biggest um, uh, war um, mongers are, have been ousted. Interestingly, Macron uh, needed to uh, dissolve the uh, national committee, and they needed to. They are going to have another uh, uh, an election in twenty days. They're going to have an election right before the Olympics. It's quite a funny moment, and of course, the uh, in Germany you could see that um, all the so-called national or nationalistic or uh, anti-globalistic forces have won a big. It's not yet enough, unfortunately. So the, the problem is that the globalists always win. They have uh, uh, imaginably a uh, huge amount of money. They have all the media behind them. Uh, they they are backed by any and every possible weapon uh, that they can utilize. And at, at the same time, those who are against globalists don't really have too much. So it's uh, it, it, the, the, um, the forces are, are unfortunately not balanced at all. And the globalists will win eventually, that's the problem, but it doesn't matter uh, uh, until they don't, because until they don't, we can still fight. So this is how I looked at the, the election. So anyhow, so, so this, right before the summer solstice, we have this stock energy, energetic moment, stock energy. And the highlights of the London chart uh, is of course the um, the moon at the very end of Scorpio conjunct the retrograde Lilith, so we can actually focus on um, on a, a revolt against injustice. But of course, this is doubly separating because the moon will enter Sagittarius in a couple of hours, and uh, Lilith is going backwards for quite some time. Uh, the, the sun uh, is separating from the uh, Venus Mercury conjunction, and uh, there is a, this quite interesting thing that the Chiron Aries conjunction, which is this year's one of this year's main um, main um, karmic astrological feature, Chiron uh, denotes our karmic wounds. Aries denotes uh, drastically altered outward circumstances. This is exactly what's happening in the world. You can see that the war uh, um, the war rhetoric is escalating, but unfortunately. Uh, this could be very dangerous, but at the same time, if you really pay attention to the details, if you really pay attention to what is happening, and you uh, listen to uh, experts who know what is happening uh, on the front, then you must realize that most of this is really rhetoric, and nothing is is uh, nothing is truly happening. People are, I mean, nations are getting rid of their old weapons. They are dumping it on the Ukrainians. The Ukrainians are forced to fight further to shed more blood or of their precious blood. A whole a whole generation is going to be wiped out. It's it's very 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 sad. And those who are fueling this in the United States and in Europe are 
are the true war criminals in my uh, in my view. So anyhow, so uh, this is really this this very stuck energy and the Chiron Aries conjunction is now backed up by Dark Moon Lilith, the uh, acceptance of the curse. So at this moment, they are trying to push this war, trying to push their agenda. Uh, I, just just lately, um, forty million euros were spent on a, a vaccine order and this vaccine is against bird flu and there was this uh, misinformation a couple of days ago when uh, uh, some some uh, someone said that uh, a, a person died of bird flu so the uh, the flu migrated from birds to humans and this is the next pandemic you you have to watch i mean i'm i'm almost positive that uh, right before the U.S. election, there is going to be another major pandemic with shutdowns and everything else. Otherwise, they they are going to lose the uh, the election. I mean, the Biden administration is going to lose the idea, and they they can't afford it because then they have to stop the war and and all kinds of other stuff. So anyhow, so this means that yes, we are going to we are we are doing this, and we don't really care what's happening. And then there is this um, midpoint structure, which you could say that this is a this is a triple conjunction, which is a bit wide, but we don't really do such wide uh, conjunctions in karmic astrology. This is over five degrees, but Sedna is at the midpoint of the Uranus Jupiter uh, uh, at the Jupiter Uranus midpoint. I do have a lengthy video on the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, how it pans out in certain uh, big cities and capitals in the world and Europe. Uh, if you want to to uh, to see it, go ahead and find in my channel. And uh, this is a space-time moment when Sedna, creation through dissection, is is linking the Jupiter-Uranus, uh, which is of course still the same. Uh, something big is happening. Something uh, in a ve very very quickly, or or there's the this freedom urges are enlarged, or lucky sudden lucky break. You could, you could actually describe it in many many ways. And seminar creation through dissection means that in order to have this moment, we need to to dissect what is not working in our life and recreate re rearrange stuff in a workable usable way. So that is the um, that's the space time moment from for London, and let's take a look at this complex anoretic planetary picture, which is really if you dissect it, it it is really two main structures, and of course the third one which comes from the two that are intertwined. <clears throat> Sorry, I I was I was giving exams and teaching and uh, and doing workshops, and I'm losing my voice really. So anyhow, the uh, water Earth kite. Is made up by the sun moon of course lilith is also joining them and black moon lilith and neptune and neptune is really interesting here because neptune uh first of all it is what uh where the two structures are are intertwined both the um uh it's it's one of the main points of the water earth uh, kite and also one of the main points of the uh, mutable uh, t square uh, and Neptune's position is interesting because in the chart, it is direct. It is at the moment currently at 29 degrees, 50 something, really, really anoretic, really ready to move. If you see this in the natal chart, it usually denotes that, yes, it's stuck, but it is ready to move on. And uh, as it is uh, direct, we don't even think that it is not going to make this move. But if you take a look, you will see that at the moment it is almost stationary. There is there's a couple of days before it becomes truly stationary. At, at the moment it moves around like one thing, one minute of an arc or something like that. One minute of an arc, really, really, really slow. And then it will stop, it will station and move backwards. As if Neptune would say, hey, I love being in my own sign. There's no way I'm going to leave this. I love it. Think, think about the smoke screens I can I, and ping pong that I can make. I mean, look around, uh, look around how mainstream media is uh, is is pushing agendas on us, and uh, and also mainstream, unfortunately, mainstream um, uh, science. I mean, look at virologists and environmentalists. How 
how they really are dishonest be because it's easier. It's much easier. If I were an expert and someone told me that, okay, now you can have a nice life. You just need to push my agenda. And please don't say uh, you're not uh, uh, believing in, in um, uh, climate change and or uh, deadly viruses and or anything else because we are paying you well and you can make a very nice living if you just push our agenda and just be, please shut up otherwise you're going to be annihilated and and not if not physically although unfortunately physically uh, it happens as well but ideologically and we are going to uh, smear you and we are going to tell that you are a bad expert and you are a bad scientist blah 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 this is what's happening and that is kind of Neptune's agenda in its own sign. I can make you believe anything I want. So Neptune is an erratic, yes. It is ready to move into the uh, the next sign, no, because it's turning back and it's going to stay for another one and a half years in its own sign, basking in its own energy. And uh, if you take a look at the others, the kite itself, the anchor point is Black Moon Lilith in Virgo, ready to move into Libra. Not yet, but it is another, another couple of days before it moves there. And at the same time, uh, the um, mutable T-square has the sun, the energetic sun at its uh, at its apex. So that's that's what it is. We have Vesta, the focusing principle, Moon Lilith, reward against injustice, because it 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 um poisons my soul. This is how I feel with the Scorpio moon there and Lilith. And the anchor point is Black Moon Lilith, uh, which is, uh, uh, I know what to do. This is the anchor point. I know what to do and I will do what is necessary. Opposite Neptune, the smoke, the smoke screen. So that's quite a funny energy in a good way. And by the way, okay, yes, uh, there is also a mutable water engine. Uh, as I, as I said, Neptune is the one that it, 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 where the two structures get intertwined and uh, Moon Lilith, Neptune and the Sun uh, are the main participants. So you have the Neptune Sun square, which is always uh, enlarging the sm smoke screen energy. Okay, here you have the transcendental celestial objects. Vesta and Black Moon Lilith are standing alone, so nothing is blurring there main energy. Vesta is the focusing principle. At the very end of Cancer, it says that you have a couple of more hours, really, to focus on your family, your homeland, and your main emotions. And Lilith, at, uh, uh, at the end of Virgo, says uh, you need to have stamina and, and clairvoyance and also determination to put things in order. And uh, uh, on the moon, Lilith, you have Erato. Uh, erotic, the muse for erotic um, uh, poetry, Seto, toxic emotions, we have the toxic emotions, and Toliman, which is uh, the healing word for Chiron wounds. This is the alpha star of Centaur, we won't be able to see that uh, only on, uh, from the uh, Northern Hemisphere only when we move to somewhere in South America or, uh, or um, New Zealand or somewhere. On Neptune, we still have Sheat, and it will be there for quite a while. Uh, this is the main healing word for suicide victims. And on the sun, you have Apophis, Sibylla, Polaris, and Betelgeuse. Apophis is uh, the Egyptian snake that is following the sun, and this is the significator of cataclysm, big, huge uh, um, disruptions. And Sibylla is the uh, goddess, the intact, nice, creator goddess who can do stuff what uh, what we human beings can't. And uh, the two stars, Polaris and Betelgeuse, are at the same astrological degree at the very end of, of uh, Gemini, but they are at very, very different portions. Polaris is the current pole star, uh, Alpha or some minor, and Betelgeuse is uh, 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 much more to the south. It is the uh, eastern shoulder of Orion, and it describes unlimited success. According to Bernard Brady, this, this star is probably one of the, the most beneficial ones to have in your NATO chart. And uh, at the moment, we do have a couple of uh, anoretic, um, not anoretic, sorry, uh, out of bounds um, uh, celestial objects. I could not put the moon here because the moon is somewhere here, so it's um, you can't uh, see it actually. 
But uh, as you can see, Mercury and Venus are also out of bounds. Mercury is quite out of bounds at 20, almost 25 uh, degrees. And the sun is, as it is almost at it, its utmost northernmost position. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you see this, anyone who was born around the solstices has an almost out of bounds sun. This sounds a bit stupid because actually the, the ecliptic is the pathway of the sun. So when we do say out of bounds, it means out of the ecliptic, above or below the ecliptic, to the south or to the north. So technically speaking, the sun cannot be out of bounds. But yes, it can, because when it is at its uh, northernmost or southernmost position, it is able to step a little bit out from the human normal position, from the order ordinary human position. These suns are able to step into the darkness of the universe, into the unknown, into the uncharted backwaters of, of the psyche, so to speak, and highlight things there. So th these are the people who are born around the solstice. And of course, uh, here you see Polaris and Betelgeuse. You can say that, uh, and that's why Bernard, I, I love Bernard Brady, really. I love her. I highly uh, recommend her work. I, I think very, very highly of her uh, in many ways. And she suggested way back in 2006, I believe, that we should not use the word conjunct, because actually there are stars that can never be conjunct. The planet simply because they are at a position in the sky where there's no planet ever. And this is Polaris, for instance, there's nothing, nothing can be actually conjunct Polaris. So we should use the verb aligned instead of conjunction uh, being aligned. So the sun is aligned both with Betelgeuse and with Polaris, two very different stars. One brings unlimited success and the other one is a dimension gate that you can actually go to parallel universes. And we also have an anoretic and dissociate Merkaba. Merkabas are very, very, very rare. Uh, actually, um, when uh, they are act when they are really not anoretic uh, or and or not dis uh, dissociate, it's I, I don't think I have seen maybe four or five in my life, really. And I've been an, uh, an astrologer for 39 years, actually. So anyhow, if you look at this chart, it, it, this drawing, you can see that. Why is this dissociate? Because Sedna and Pluto are out of sign. The Sedna Pluto trine is in Earth, in, in uh, air signs, and the rest is in Earth, in water. So here you have a dissociate energy. And anoretic means that at the very end of the signs. And this happens when you have anoretic placements and zero degree placements or one degree placements, you end up with, with dissociate uh, aspects. And the problem with dissociate aspects is that they are not working according to their usual behavior. Uh, yes, they simply don't work the same way. If you have an anoretic trine, it, co it could be stuck, but still uh, proper. But if you have a dissociate trine, uh, it means that it's not working according to its uh, proper meaning. And here, this is what you see, uh, for instance, in this angel wing portion of the uh, Merkaba, uh, the sun is still in Gemini, Sedna is already in Gemini, and Vesta is still in Cancer. So actually, this, the sextile between Sedna and Vesta, and Vesta is a semi-sextile energy. But of course, the, as soon as Vesta moves into uh, uh, into Leo, you will have the, uh, the uh, so this this uh, dissociate energy will dissipate, and you will have the true um, form of the uh, the, the um, aspect. So this is it. I'm going to make another video <clears throat> on the summer solstice, and two days later <clears throat> about the um, uh, full moon. Sorry about my voice; I'm really losing it. Unfortunately, I spoke so much uh, in the past couple of two weeks. <laughs> It's not sore throat. I'm just, I don't, I'm not, uh, I, I can't rule my own voice. Let's put it this way. But anyhow, so we are living in interesting times. Let's hope that uh, with this getting stuck energy is not, it's not the war that is uh, picking up. It's really maybe the powers that be are kind of re uh, received a, uh, 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 a kind of a wake up call that people don't want their agenda. I'm just hoping. I'm hoping that we can go back to normalcy, which is totally not happening in many, many aspects of our lives. 
but it's up to us, we the people. It's really up to us what we are going to take with us uh, from this life and how we are going to live our lives. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.